People who walked out of a job interview, why did you do it? I wasn't informed about the evidently very strict building security prior to the interview. The front door was practically unmarked, and you had to swipe a card to get in, but there was no intercom. The elevator required a card as well, but the stairs didn't. However, no one informed me that the stairwells are locked from the outside, meaning I was locked in the stairwell with no way to get out. I called the recruiter over and over, and even called the front desk, but they just kept putting me on hold instead of sending someone to let me in at the correct floor. I ended up getting a call from the recruiter while still stuck in the stairwell telling me they would not be going forward with the interview because I was late. I almost screamed, and asked her as calmly as I could manage if she had gotten any of the messages I left for her letting her know I was presently stuck in the stairwell with no way to get out. She said she hadn't, and said it was too late anyway because they had gone with another candidate. She almost hung up before I could yell, probably too loudly, then can someone please come free me from the stairwell so I can leave? They sent security to get me, and I was treated like a criminal as I was led from the building. I have never been so confused, humiliated, and angry in my entire life. I left them a scathing review on Glassdoor. It was a virtual interview and I ended it. The interviewer was a complete jerk, had an ego, and would make condescending remarks. Just told him that it sounds like he's not interested in working together so in the interest of both our time, we should just end the call. I once showed up for a job interview in a suit and tie after answering a newspaper ad for a warehouse worker. Instead of a job interview at the warehouse, they had me get into some truck with one of the employees who drove me a few hours away, pulled over in some random neighborhood, and explained to me that the job was going door to door trying to sell cuts of meat to people, unsolicited. I told him this was not the warehouse worker job that they had advertised and if he didn't bring me back home immediately, I was going to call the police and report a kidnapping. I was brought back to my car, but I was not paid for the several hours of my wasted time. Frick you, Pacific Prime of Cromwell, Connecticut. Showed up and the manager practically bragged about how the job offered no breaks for an 8 to 10 hour shift, and if there was a food break it would be 5 minutes max at a hip height table with no chairs. She said that you'd be fired if you sat down even for 30 seconds. I'm more than capable of doing that. I did that every day at my last job. But when you brag about how your employees are so overworked that they don't get breaks or an option to rest their legs, it tells me all I need to know about how little you value your employees. I should also note that this job wasn't paying exceptionally well. Above minimum wage, but not at a level that was even enough to live on. Slightly different, I actually interviewed and was hiring by a call center that focused on getting donations for a variety of non-profit organizations, I was desperate. It was on a Thursday, and I was told to show up the following Monday. When I showed up Monday morning, the entire business unit was completely empty. Like, stripped to the floor, wires hanging from the roof empty. When I was there the week before, I saw around 20 to 25 cubicles of people all working diligently, a manager's desk at the far back, and waiting area chairs with a table, all in one large room. To this day I have no idea what happened, I just know they got out of there quick in three days time. I once went to a job interview for a large welding shop, in the middle of a rainstorm. After talking to the interviewer for 30 or so minutes, he walked me out to the shop floor to take a welding test. The machine we went to was in decent condition, but was literally sitting in a puddle of water. The welding table's legs were rusty and not grounded well, and also in said puddle. Over half the shop was flooded. I turned around and said, no thank you. Then proceeded to walk out the door. My life is worth more than $20 an hour. Applied for a teaching job. My current at the time job was at a school for people with disabilities, this new school was a school for children gifted in a particular field. I was headhunted when one of my students from my current school was accepted to the new school. The woman interviewing asked why I wanted to work there, so I explained the above, including student with disability, she goes, with the most disgusted look on her face. We don't have students like that here. Should point out that I'm also disabled. Was not going to work out obviously. I was approached at work bagger for a major grocery store chain when I was 16, by a guy who asked me if I would be interested in making $1,100 a week. He told me to meet him at one of the empty businesses in the same plaza after work. He went on this long spiel about the Melaleuca tree from Australia and how his company made soaps and shampoo out of it. Then he told me for $500 he would train me how to sell the products. I just turned and walked out the door with him yelling behind me that I would never amount to anything with my attitude. A jumped up security guard made me walk away before I even got in the building for an interview. I followed the instructions I was sent by the hiring manager which was to park in the designated guest spaces. Security guard came charging out of the building yelling at me when I was barely out of the car about how I couldn't park there. Then when I raised my voice just to try and get him to listen he started yelling at me for yelling at him. Eventually when I got to tell him that I was told to park there, he called the hiring manager and started yelling at them about how I'd been yelling at him. Part way through that phone call I thought, nah frick this. 
got back in the car and drove off. The hiring manager called me to apologize and asked if I'd come back. I politely declined saying I wanted nothing to do with that security guard again. It was for a management position, running a mail room. Something I'd done twice before. All the standard questions were asked. I felt like it was going well. Then he suddenly says to me, I'm hearing a lot of, I from you. I'm concerned, because we are about the team, and not the individual, here. The hell? It's a job interview and you're concerned that I am answering questions you have asked specifically about me, with answers that address your questions about me. That's utterly nonsensical. I don't even remember how I responded, but I knew I didn't want to deal with a stupid semantic word and mind games, which I was sure I'd only seen the surface of. So I steered us right into concluding the interview, and I left. I also made a subtle show of taking back the copies of my resume that I'd brought with me. I should have, I stayed there out of morbid curiosity to see how low they would go, but I had made the decision I wasn't gonna work there early in the process. I'm glad I stayed. The last thing that happened in the interview was the CEO personally asking us all to promise that, if we ever make a mistake, the company will calculate how much that mistake cost us. And we will voluntarily pay the company that amount. Owner of a bar told me in the first interview, to never approach him with a problem because I wouldn't like how he fixed it. That tells me he either doesn't know how to fix things, or he uses illegal methods to fix things. I'm a vet tech. Interviewed at a primary care, single doctor practice. The manager was over 25 minutes late to my interview. While I waited for her, the front desk staff ignored me while they talked crap about the techs, manager, and clients. The manager said they did not believe in referring to any specialists, because, Dr. A is a specialist in everything from grizzly bears to canaries. He was not. He hadn't even done a rotating internship and definitely had not done any type of residency program. I had already worked in a toxic clinic, but at least the doctors were competent. When she asked if I had any questions, I just asked if I could have my resume back, so I didn't waste the paper. They spelled my name wrong on their internal documents all the while emphasizing how important attention to detail was. On top of that they kept asking the same exact question about 12 different ways, which the answer to it was clearly listed in my work experience on my resume. This was for a thermal engineering position. They offered a tour of the facility while the person I was to work under finished up a meeting. I declined and left. I applied for a registered position at Pizza Hut. I specifically told them during my two interviews that I cannot be a delivery driver due to my car being unreliable, they even acknowledged that and told me okay. Got the job, came in for training on the first day, the very first thing they do is sit me down in a chair and started up a training video on delivery driving. I asked them if I could skip it since I'm only working the register in the kitchen, and the manager tells me that every position is a delivery driver. Walked out right then and there and got paid for one hour of training. Happened fairly recently. Made it to the third interview for a large company. The first two they told me what my role would be, base pay plus commission, told me they were so excited to have me on board because of my experience. So I sit down for the third interview, they again go over my role, my pay, etc. They say they're prepared to offer me the job right now and had the paperwork ready since this morning. But then, they say, but we already hired someone for that. So instead what we'd like you to do is, and proceeded to tell me the pay was less than half what they were already offering me prior for a lot more work. Basically I went from being offered a management job to just being asked to train all the new employees they just hired then stepped down to cashier for $10 per hour. And no guaranteed hours. I stood up and told them I was worried I was wasting their time prior to this interview because I wasn't entirely sold on the job yet. But after today, it's become pretty apparent you guys were the ones wasting my time instead. No thank you. And I left. About an hour later I got a phone call asking for a fourth interview. They called almost every day for two weeks asking me to come back and talk to the owner. I had been told it was a marketing job. The first interview was about marketing and took place in an office. I got a call back and was very happy as it meant I'd be able to get out of a call center and do something I liked. I took my last day off I was allowed to go to the next interview, and when I got there they said they wanted me to go to the local Home Depot with them. I got there and found out it was an MLM. I was so stunned that I let them take me out of the floor, and show off the aggressive sales technique they wanted me to use on random customers. I walked out crying because now I had no days off to interview and I was ashamed to have been tricked by the first interview. Once interviewed with the company in over here in Chicago for an engineering manager role. First part of the interview went well, then I met with a senior manager there, and he talked about the kind of shit they did. After a short time, it clicked with me. These mother frickers are loan sharks. I thanked him for his time and told him that I wasn't interested in fricking over poor people, got up, and walked out the door. No thanks, I'm not going to help payday lenders get more customers. Not quite an interview, but, when I finished university I didn't have a sensible job to go to immediately. 
I went to a job agency and said I was looking for a temporary job for experience working in my chosen field, IT. I didn't mind exactly what it was, or really how much it paid. We talked about my existing qualifications and experience. At the end of the interview they said they had the perfect job for me. Someone will pick me up the following morning. I said that I could drive, but no. They would pick me up. Fine. As I said, didn't really care where it was or exactly what I was doing as long as it met my, admittedly vague, requests, and they assured me that it was. The following day a minibus came to get me. So where did they take me to work? A salad packing factory, to spend the day literally packing salad. I was getting paid, so what did it matter for one day? The worst was finding out over lunch was that if I had literally just turned up at the factory they would have probably given me work. That is what happened for most of the staff there, who were largely seasonal workers from Eastern Europe, and those folk were also paid more than me, not because I was new. But anybody who just turned up would likely get work and get paid more than I was. Obviously they took us there by minibus so we wouldn't just leave once we'd been tricked into going. So I did exactly that, finished my lunch and then walked home. I walked out of a second interview. The promised advertised wage had been changed due to a recent budget change. Was substantially lower than what was promised on the add-on in my first interview. It was for an assistant manager's role, pre-COVID, at a cinema. I thanked them for wasting my time and walked out and got a five guys. Third and final interview, all same day, at a tech company. First two went well and I was told this last one just was a formality, they wanted me to join. Interview with the head of the office guy seemed to start well. We walked to the cafeteria, grabbed a couple coffees, and with some small talk we learned we knew some of the same people. We get back to his office and sit down. He looks at my file, it says here you're looking for, certain salary. I said yes, and explained it's really close to market for someone with my skills and experience. He looks at me and says, I don't think you're worth it. I said, excuse me? He repeated it. I laughed, grabbed my bag, stood up, thanked him for his time and walked out. The company went out of business like a year later, so I feel I dodged a bullet there. Job was advertised as a senior level Unix admin position. The same job I'm doing now for 20 years. Showed up and was told in fact the job would start as an entry level help desk job, with entry level pay and that I could earn my way up to being a sysadmin AMD work my way up the pay scale. I got up and explained that I'd already earned my way up to being a sysadmin and wished them a good day and walked out. They came out into the parking lot and asked why I was leaving. I explained that their job description was deceptive. Interviewer, what would you do if an employee of 15 years asked for a raise? Me, I'd remind him that he already gets a yearly raise. Interviewer, I don't give out raises. Showed up and the woman at the front desk greeted me while I waited for the interview. I introduced myself and handed her my resume, waited. Once I got into the actual interview, I saw that she had taped a bright pink note to my resume that read, has the personality of a rock. How she determined that from our brief introductory exchange was beyond me at the time. The interviewer saw my facial expression when I saw the note. I thanked him for his time and left. I later found out, a couple of years later, when I worked with a former employee of that firm, that the woman at the front desk was the boss's wife. She had made it known that she didn't want young, or thin, or single, women working in the office, lol. This happened close to 30 years ago when I was starting out in my career. I assume the boss and his wife are deceased or at least retired by now. Firm still exists, but clearly policies have changed as their staff is quite diverse, including several younger women. I moved to a new city, and tried finding a job in my preferred area. I went to an interview where I sat down with two well-polished ladies, who were the company owners. One of the women said, glad you could make it. Now, before we really begin, I see where you were being paid X amount per hour at your last job. I'm sorry, we can't afford to pay you that much. I immediately smiled, stood right back up, and said, Thank you for not further wasting my time. The shocked look on both their faces was priceless as I skedaddled on out of there. They were probably expecting negotiations, but honestly, any person who opens an interview with that kind of statement deserves a walkout. It was a job below my current salary spectrum. I was kinda desperate. I had years of experience in that role. I attended many interviews in my life so I thought I knew what to expect. I also knew the money they were offering at this one which wasn't great. But hey. Let's try. The interview was the most intense, I have ever encountered. I didn't like the interrogation style of it and seriousness, many tricky questions. Three people asking me variety of questions and turns, follow-up questions, especially for someone who knows the role after years of doing it. It seemed that I was applying for a CEO of all CEOs role. It was coming to 45 minutes when I just started laughing, shaking my head at the ridiculousness of this charade and said I am sorry I can't do it. Got the job at my current salary rate soon after, elsewhere. Any job that says, you get what you put into it. You wouldn't want to limit yourself to just a 9 to 5 would you? Yes. Yes I would. 
40 hours workweek max, thanks. I want to do my job and get paid for my job. F off. The ad said it was a salary position with benefits and holidays off. I showed up and it was percent 100 commission with crappy benefits and insane hours. I was like, I don't think we should continue with the interview, good day. Worked as a permanent software developer for 6 years after university before deciding to quit to do contract work instead for better pay and flexibility. I put myself out there and found a 3 month contract role and was due to start in a week's time, happy days. In the meantime I got approached by a recruiter offering me an interview for a permanent role so I said no thanks I'm only interested in contract roles and I've found one now anyway so I'm off the market for the next 3 months. Recruiter came back to me and said the company were really interested in me and use contractors too so would like to interview me anyway as they might be able to offer me contract work in 3 months. Time when I was back on the market. So the next day I get dressed up all smart, drive an hour through traffic to go to the interview at their office which turned out to be in a shithole location. First question. What's your availability like if you were offered this role? I'm starting a three-month contract next week, why have you come to interview for this permanent job then? I haven't. I said I didn't want it and the recruiter told me to come anyway because you use contractors too and are interested in using me in future, no that's not true we've never used contractors. We're looking for someone permanent to start as soon as possible, right okay then bye. The contract role I'd already secured paid almost as much in three months as this job did in a year. But the recruiter thought if he could just trick me into going to the interview that maybe I'd change my mind and take his shitty role instead. I finished up 4 hours of interviews in their offices when I asked my final question to the 3 senior software engineers in front of me, do you enjoy working here? I was one of the 3 people they were looking for to replace them. They were unhappy. Was looking for a job and was in an interview for a clothing store CSR. Once they started talking about meeting sales goals I told her politely that I didn't think it was a good fit and left. It was never mentioned in the ad or anything. I will never do sale goals bullshit again, that's all. It is pretty demoralizing when you can't hit your goals and then because of that you must listen to managers say, don't take no for a reason or, get three no's before accepting. No means no dude. It's gross and I'll never do it again. We can't pay you the first three months, only an experience yes, but no. I'd be like, can I crash at your place, then? Thank you for watching, hit the like button for more long videos.